Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Well, I didn't expect this, and I don't suppose the Collective West were expecting it either. But it appears that the Russian President Vladimir Putin has brokered a peace deal between China and India over their conflict over borders. I mean, the Kazan Bricks Summit concluded with a meeting in an expanded format, including 13 countries whose applications to join the organisation are now considered a priority. Now, a significant number of other states have indicated a similar level of interest, indicating that the BRICS will experience multiple waves of expansion in the near future. I mean, the group has already expanded from five to nine, but the countries that initiate the process, says Russia, China, and India, remain well known and well understood. Now, the BRICS alliance began in the RIC format in 2003. It was the concept of reuniting these three major Eurasian powers was first proposed by Yevgeny Primakov back in 1998. At that time, the Russian leadership lacked any accurate understanding of both its geopolitical interests and Russia's global position in the world. However, as a forward-thinking statesman, the academic Primakov, he was then head of the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, recognised that relying on post-Soviet Russia's integration with the West, or even on a strategic partnership with it, was a flawed approach. He was right, wasn't he? Russia also needed to focus on the East, based on both on its national interests and the desire to build a new post-Western world order. Now, China, India, along with Russia, were identified as the three forces that could promote this and consolidate the non-Western world around themselves. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now actually for watching because every viewer is important to me. Now this concept has consistently faced criticism from the West and the Western geopoliticians, not only because they didn't align with their interests but also due to other factors. Some observers have noted that the three powers have significant and complex differences that could limit the potential for a long-term and comprehensive rapprochement. I mean, it's clear that they seek to limit the West's influence in the regions of the world that are important to them, or even reduce its shareholding and globalisation. However, it is likely that they will eventually come into conflict with each other, including in the competitions for spheres of influence. Therefore, it's unlikely that the Anglo-Saxons will have a cause for concern regarding the emergence of a unity front of non-Western powers under the leadership of Moscow, Beijing and Delhi. I mean, it was only recently at the start of Russia's spiritual military operation in the Ukraine that the West finally woke up and acknowledged the possibility of a strategic alliance between Russia and China. This was a concept that had previously been considered unfeasible. Although China has not become a military ally, it's clear which side of the fence it's sitting on. It has become evident that Beijing will not sacrifice its strategic relationship with Russia for the sake of a tactical minor win in its confrontation with the U.S. Now, the West has not given up trying to drive a wedge between Moscow and Beijing, but now it's doing so uh, more in hope than uh, actual judgment. In the meantime, the main focus is on playing on the contradictions between Beijing and Delhi, which presents them an opportunity which they might get some mileage out of. So the territorial dispute represented a significant obstacle to the advancement of China and India relationship. Now, these roots can actually be traced back to the colonial era when Great Britain exercised control over India and it sought to assess its influence over Tibet. Then later in 1962, the two countries, Russia and India, went to war, this time when Russia's closest allied relations between Moscow and Beijing had developed a significant rift under Mao Zedong. 
So that was the time when ties between Moscow and Delhi were actually getting strengthened. Now, the next two decades, the Moscow-Delhi-Beijing triangle was essentially comprised of two sides. China was in opposition to the USSR and India. Now, Beijing began to establish ties with Moscow and Delhi only by the mid-1980s, but there was no discussion then of a trilateral format at all. Then, when the Soviet Union collapsed and power and Moscow ended up in the hands of the pro-Western elite fronted by their puppet Yeltsin, Delhi continued to be wary of Chinese initiatives. Therefore, the genuine triangular relationship didn't begin to emerge until the beginning of the 21st century, when the leadership of all three countries recognised it was something of value. Now, despite the appointment of the strong leaders capable of strategic thinking in both Beijing and Delhi, Xi Jinping in 2012 and Modi in 2014, the territorial disputes had remained unresolved. And it's clear that the border disputes and conflict only helped to serve the agendas of those opposed to uh, a rapprochement between the two. I mean, that allowed the West to use the threat of Chinese expansion to influence Delhi and impede the progress of BRICS. Now, Mr Xi and Mr Modi have held several meetings in an informal, unofficial format and even visited each other. I mean, the last meeting took place uh, prior to this one in autumn 2019, just before the pandemic. Now, after the pandemic, there were violent clashes between the two countries' militaries on the border in the Himalayas. And that resulted in the suspension of all exchange visits. Plus, there's been no official meeting between Xi and Modi since that time. I mean, yes, they have met on a few occasions at international forums, but there's been nothing official in the negotiations. So, therefore, it's of great significance that on Wednesday at the summit in Kazan, the first official meeting between the Chinese president and the Indian prime minister in uh, five years took place. It was also announced that the previous days that in recent weeks diplomats and military personnel from both countries had held discussion and had actually reached agreement on border patrol mechanisms, or actually the line of control, indicate that the situation returned to the state before the violent clashes four years ago. Now, this was evident it was done with the specific intention of facilitating discussions between Xi and Modi, and an agreement re represents a significant accomplishment in itself. I mean, reinforcing the trust between India and China is of paramount importance for Russia and the broader non-Western world, which is why the meeting between Xi and Modi was so pivotal. Ultimately, now the US has been deprived of the ability to influence relationship in the RIC, the Russia-India-China Triangle, and this will be a significant uh, contribution to strengthening the BRICS. Now, it's notable that Putin has a strong relationship based on trust and mutual respect with both Modi and Xi Jinping, so it's no surprise to see him be able to get the two together and resolve the issues that are not that important in the scheme of things, and after all, are just minor territorial disputes that are really not go worth going to war over or damaging good and economic political relations. So the West's best efforts to sow discord and conflict among the leading members of the BRICS has failed again, but I'm sure it will not be the last attempt of the failing and falling hegemon to try and damage and disparage the BRICS. Now thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. Uh, also share if you have any followers. If you've enjoyed this video, you can click on the thanks button and make a small contribution, which will be greatly appreciated. Don't forget the comments. Love to read them. Love to respond to them and just keep them coming. Thank you.